so, uh, I'll, I'll sometimes, you know, uh, make a joke at an individual uh, case, um, not a, not a, uh, but not at a class. Right? So, sure. you know, this guy's kind of weird for wearing a weird hat, but not. Look at these shitty pe kinds of people who wear this hat. If that right, makes sense. Right. Um, right, like this, this, this. Where did this lady learn to drive from? You know, fucking like yeah, the, the people in Himalayas, as opposed to like all women are horrible drivers. Right, um, and of course it requires a, a bit of knowledge of cultural context because um, if I say something that's in line with a stereotype, even if I don't know it, it kind of gets sucked onto the stereotype. You know? Yeah. Um, so. Uh, a thing people have trouble with uh, sometimes is they'll say a joke, and it'll it'll be an offensive joke because it's it's using a stereotype, but they're unaware of the stereotype, and so they think they should be immune to critique for it. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, just because, as far as you've seen, this is the one time this joke has ever been told in all of history, but when we tell you it's been told a hundred times and is used to oppress. Why don't you listen and tell a better <laughs> joke? Um, I work in the, the haunted house, and um, there's some overlap of I ideas here, because um, we create characters to be scary. Yeah. And that's also other. The, the, the thing that's scary about this character is, is the ways that they're not human. Yeah. That they're not normal, as it were. Um, and sometimes... Uh, I've had to speak sternly to, to uh, people who were designing characters that were voodoo queen uh, or a homeless person or, <laughs> or a man in a dress. Yeah. Um, uh, a man in a dress guy, too. I, I also had to speak to him about not chanting rape and AIDS into the ears of the customers. Wow. What? what these are scary things. You know what? <laughs> Bad's... So you worked with PewDiePie. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, um, did he did I, he did he try to use the defense that he was trying to be Norman Bates? Because uh, that's uh, that uh, that I think would be the best defense. I'm pretty sure Norman Bates was invoked somewhere in in that uh, series of discussions because we had to, to stop men and dress a couple times, which is actually a little funny because we also hired two drag queens. <laughs> Who were were not portraying a man in a dress? Who isn't that funny or who isn't that scary? A man in a dress. They had fully fledged characters that they created that, that through their drag persona. They were like vampire queens, right? Okay. Um, queens in the royalty sense, rather than in the performance right, right. sense. Um, and and so. They, they were great, and they made it a little harder to tell the other guy, you can't be a man in a dress. Yeah. But they are. No. That's a character. That's a well-designed character. That's a person who does this kind of performance. Your joke, or, or your gag, which, which works both for joke and for scare, your gag is entirely, how strange, a man in a dress. <laughs> it doesn't work that well. You're going to irritate some people. You're yeah. going to, you know, the best you're going to get is a cheap laugh from someone who doesn't know better. Yeah. You can do better. And and that's the way I'd always I I would tend to do it when when I'm having these talks is um that their choices are getting in the way of their performance. Cuz if I go for, you know, that's just wrong or that's just offensive, then they get defensive. And then we have a whole PC, gone mad, blah, blah, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> so, you know what? I don't care to have that conversation with people that aren't in my life. Yeah. It's, it's worth it if there's someone that I care about that's making the mistake. I'll have that conversation. If it's a stranger or a co-worker, it's generally not worth my time, and it can have negative, uh, negative uh, effects. Um... Because no matter how careful I am, no matter how um, diplomatic I am, there are people that will be offended by being told they did something offensive. And yeah. I, meanwhile, I, crying that people are too offendable these days. 
Oh, the sword broke. That was sad. Um, it is... I, I will admit, I, I think there's a bit of... It is a bit difficult simply because there are people out there who will uh, say, oh, this isn't acceptable about uh, pretty benign things. And so as a, a non-minority person, it, it sometimes can get a little confusing. It's like, well, wait, is this just somebody being ridiculous or is this something I should listen to? But I think if you, you know, uh, kind of choose who to listen to, and especially if you're, you know, especially if, say, uh, uh, like a Chinese person tells you this is offensive to Chinese people, maybe maybe that's a cue to listen, you know? Um, yeah, but if, if Becky, uh, Becky White Lady tells you this is offensive to Chinese, she has less authority on the subject. Yeah, she, she, which is, which is right, why... She wrong. Which is why I find it very difficult to uh, perform interrupts myself, because I feel like, well, I'm just some cishet white guy, like, do I really have any room to speak here? But then I feel like an ass because I haven't spoken up when somebody says something offensive, you know? Well, so. he, here's, here's what you can do. You can not make a, a lecture about it, but just say, I, I don't like that. That's not okay. Please don't tell that kind of joke around me. Just say, wait, I'm going to call my Chinese friend. <laughs> yeah. um, because what what you can do, I mean, if if they're willing to learn, then, then they'll ask the right kinds of questions and you'll know that they'll listen to you. Uh, but even without any of that, that cool outcome... They get a data point that one person on the entire planet doesn't agree with them. No. And that may not be something they know. They often think everybody thinks just like them, because no one has ever spoken up. Yeah. Yeah, and, I... and so, when, when I don't have the energy for, for a lecture, uh, or when it's a bad idea for a lecture, I, I'll give it as simple as possible, like... I don't think that's okay, or I, I don't want to hear that, uh, or, you know, uh, I, I don't, I, you know, I think I have a problem with that, Any, anything, you know, just just very, very narrow focus, and if you have to, leave the room, because I, I find sometimes that's the best thing to do in that case, too, it's so like, that's not okay, and then walk out, because um, I, I don't need to engage, all they need to do is know that someone believes that, that that's not okay. That's all they're going to get out of it. That's not much, but it's not nothing. Uh, you know, there was one one guy telling a racist joke. I can't remember what it was specifically, and um, I kind of geared up for lecture mode on why it was not okay, and um, then he said, well, it's racist against white people to make fun of hillbillies, and I said, ah, I'm not going to have the rest of this conversation with you. And kind of from that point on, I went for super simple. And sometimes someone will come to me later, separately, away from other people, and ask a question in earnest. But what happens generally in the moment of the joke, or worse, is defensiveness. And they're not going to listen if they're defensive. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it helps me that I'm in a position of, of a bit of authority. So I can actually <laughs> walk by someone and say, no, let's not have any Holocaust jokes. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll listen. They may think I'm an asshole about it, but they'll listen. <laughs> Let's only approach it in a serious manner. It's funny that there was a, an actor who was a clown, and she told she was telling jokes to the customers, which normally is, actually isn't a good idea. But you know, she's making it work, and she told a Holocaust joke, uh, and I said I don't want to hear that joke ever again, just in passing. And then ten minutes later. I was walking out in the parking lot, and she was telling her friend about what I had said. In order to do so, she was telling the same Holocaust joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I felt kind of magical, because I walked up and, and shook my finger, and she said, How did, how did you? How? <laughs> like I'd shown up out of, out of the blue just because she was telling the joke again. Yeah, yeah. I, we ha you have actually told that story on here before. We have now reached enough airtime that we are just repeating ours. Oh. <laughs> really? In this show? In this yeah, series? Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I hope I embellish it to some degree a, a little differently or something. 
it, it came to mind this time because uh, I recently someone made a bad Holocaust joke on Facebook. And uh, I was just kind of browsing through the main page. And normally I just look at my own page and a few friends that I, I have um, set to, to give me notifications. Uh, but, you know, I was bored. I was kind of rolling down and there's this just really visual joke, too. So, it, it, you know, I didn't have to stop and read. It's just like going by like, ah, crap. And then I, I responded, which I shouldn't have, in, in, I, I think. And I just wrote disgusting. Right. Yeah. But that makes it show up in my feed, so my friends saw that. Mm. Like Skix reacted to this. Gosh. Yeah. Now I've exposed other people to this horror. That. And I blocked the guy because I I don't want to talk to him about it. He's, yeah. He's heard my response. He knows that what I think about it. Um. He has a. Um. Dixie flag tattoo. So I mean. <laughs> I, I, I can have enough character analysis on this guy to think that he's not going to be open to my, my opinion on this. Yeah, probably. Probably not. I uh, I kind of love responding to things on Facebook because it's amazing to me how crazy, like, over-the-top responses will be. I, I once spoke out against something and... Uh, I try. I always try to do so politely and in an educational way, rather than like you know, go suck a fuck or whatever. And um, <laughs> and yeah, there's value in that too. Um, and uh, and I remember the best response I got was somebody telling me that I am everything that's wrong in the world, and I was like, wow, <laughs> that's so not true. Uh, how 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 sheltered must your life be to? I mean. <laughs> I'm sure they're. Oh, just we're actually going to read but... some coffee. Ooh. May... Oh no, we're just going to drink it. Okay. Are you could have a coffee. Oh, there it is. Uh, all right. Lucky number three. So my oh, lucky number three. is three today. Three. The first case I worked after joining the FBI had three victims. Big fucking deal. Same again. Oh, maybe we're just going to do all the coffees right now. Oh, well, this will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Place, train An unpredictable life is a wonderful thing. No. Cases may come flooding in like passengers at rush hour. Um. All right. I guess we're done with it. Okay. Yes, I was saying, if you really think that you're you're the, all that's bad in the world, you led a really sheltered life. <laughs> You've never experienced pain or hunger or any no, kind I, of oppression. I, or... I caused those things, apparently. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, which, which is true, but I, you know, I also uh, am nice to cats. I don't know. <laughs> Viewers, what do you think? Am I everything that's wrong in this world? <laughs> Weigh in. Share your thoughts. What's kind of funny, and, and I guess it's kind of an inverse of Poe's Law, where, where someone creates a scenario that's so ridiculous, like, this is what you people want. You you want to elect a disabled lesbian mayor. And we're all, that'd be cool. Yeah. I know one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, uh, this is the world liberals want is the meme that's going around lately. Have you seen that? No. Um, I can't remember the source, but someone, um, there's a, uh, a picture, uh, of some people on a subway in costume. Um, I think there was, like, a dominatrix and someone in a hijab, uh, which isn't costume, but, um, I don't know if they're going to a con or something, but, but, uh, this conservative type posted this picture with, like, this is the world liberals want. And, and on Twitter, people are like, well, yeah, that'd be cool. Why not? Yeah. And then they started posting pictures of, like, furry conventions. This is the world liberals want, or, or various other sorts of oddball uh, photos. That's I, again, the, the, joke, the joke being, it's look at these people who are other. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. 
Although the, the reply joke is, look at these people who are interesting and cool that this conservative guy thinks is other. Yeah. Look at the opposite of the point he was trying to make. Yeah, it's, um... I don't know, I just don't... It's... I guess I used to think that... No, oh, we're maybe gonna get some plot here. Shit, hold on. Hold that oh. thought. Is that Harry's house? Yeah, we're finally going to fucking do this... Visit Harry like we said we were going to like an hour ago. <laughs> Why are you walking so far? Your, your car could have taken you right up to the gate. Uh, Look, the camera brand camera. Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome. Maybe the gate has to open out towards... No. Okay, no. there's no reason for it. No reason for it. I don't think there would be a yellow line inside his private property. I mean, I guess he could have put it in there himself, but... Yeah, I, yeah. Mr. Francis York Morgan. You got him to walk up to the camera, but you you didn't have him walk in the door. <laughs> it does move him right into the lobby. It does seem a little. Mr. Francis York Morgan, Mr. Stewart has been waiting for you to the meeting room. I don't like you your shall haircut. go to. Was that supposed to rhyme? Because it was really terrible. If so, as uh, some of them are definitely a stretch. Do, 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 do. This is a seriously impractical room design. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I want a room that does this. The meeting room is through here. I don't know if you noticed Please, that not only did the, did the piano turn, but it also unlocked the door. Ah, uh, no, I did not notice that. Don't talk to him. Yes. So, like, if you have to... Uh, um, oh my god. That, okay, whatever. Sometimes it's couplets, sometimes it's fucking quatrains. Um, yeah, so like if you get home and you, um, you really need to go to the bathroom, you're just kind of fucked. Yes. Yeah, there are a lot of, this, this house is, is really impractical for anyone in hurry. Could there be a puzzle to open the door? I don't know what that voice was. Uh, don't expect me to do it again. All right. <laughs> Little Fred Wynn, I think, is, is where that was going. <laughs> Little never... Fred Wynn. Like Little, Little Landy Wynn. Cap. Yes. Where's the mirror? Is Harry a uh, zombie? Is Harry a... Vampire? Vampire. Yes. Me of all people. Good lord. <laughs> Statues who need uh, umbrellas. Uh. Okay. It's not gonna. No, you need. No. Okay. Wow, I don't know what the fuck we're doing. So he's got six statues, and some of them have. Uh, I think swords, and the ones that don't, he can put the umbrella in. But he's got to put the right numbered umbrella in the right statue. And he got that information from reading the music at the beginning of the section. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes. Really practical if you need to go pee, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Slow animation every time too, just in case you were, you know, wanting to do it fastly. <laughs> fastly. That one's a different color. So I play a lot of Minecraft, and I discovered today that they have Latin as as a language option. So I've been playing it in Latin. Nice. And. Um, there's no punchline. It's not a joke. It's just a, a brief anecdote. I think I think I, I think I've mentioned that uh, the last time I played, I put my language on lolcats. 
Yes, I saw that. Um, and I've played Pirates before. Yeah, I don't find Pirates fun or interesting. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fucking Harry, the big talk. We've been waiting eight episodes for this bullshit. Is he going to talk with or without Michael? Those are glued to the tray. That's how we do it here at Harry's house. 